Hello everyone, it's Miss Darling in the studio and today we're going to go to royalty. I had an idea that I wanted to explore and it got me kind of excited so I thought I would just jump into it. This I'm going to call a journalette. It's sort of a journal but a much abbreviated one and what I've done is I'm going to start with this card that I got in the mail. It's eight and a half by 14 folded over becomes eight and a half by seven inches this way. And it was just an, a political advertisement. And so I'm going to use it as the substrate and I'll of course be covering it up and then turning it into a journalette featuring royalty, the queens, queens of England. I got fascinated with that back when I started watching Downton Abbey and loved the architecture, loved the furnishings, most specifically loved the fashion of the 1920s. Anyway, it started me on a whole process of being interested in, you know, more ornate things. I have always been very, you know, more grungy and more rustic in my taste, but that all changed. So, I had these queens that I put against like a Florentine background. This, by the way, is part of a kit that's available in my Etsy shop. And so you can uh, get the kit and download all of these and have them for your own use. I have a coat of arms here that, I guess I have it upside down, coat of arms here, I plan to use one of those. That's available too. And for the journal sheets, these are coffee dyed pages and I have put the ruling on there and printed them off on both sides. And there's a PDF in the kit that will give you this ruling so that you can print off on whatever paper you want to use if you're going to make something like this. Anyway, go visit my Etsy shop for a lot of resources such as this. Okay, now here's my idea. It's going to, my cover's going to feature Queen Mary, sometimes referred to as Bloody Mary. Anyway, I just love this costume. I love this whole painting. It's just really outstanding. So I'm going to use that on the cover. I have these Florentine papers that I'm going to use to cover the inside. These are really just wrapping paper that I purchased and cut apart so that these smaller sheets are big enough for my purposes uh, for this video and for this project. And I've gone ahead and cut up the queens. I have two different kits that has these queens on them in different poses and different backgrounds and they're of course all available in my Etsy shop and then I had this beautiful fabric that I've had in my stash and I'm going to make use of this too. I think the colors go very nicely with the painting that I'll be using. So let's get started. 
And by the way, if you like this content and found, find it helpful to you, I would certainly appreciate if you would like the video and share it with your family and friends and help support the growth of the channel so other people can enjoy what we're doing here. So I'm going to be gluing this white piece of cardstock, which I have pre-cut to size, and I'm going to glue this to this side of the advertisement. You can, of course, do this idea in a smaller version or even a larger version. It doesn't have to be the exact same size. I'm just using this particular size because of the size of the mailing piece that I'm using. I don't buy larger sizes of paper other than eight and a half by 11 because that's what my printer will print. So it's nice when larger sizes come in the mail and then I can use them on the interior of the various projects I tackle. After I folded the mailer in half, I scored it about an eighth of an inch in on each side so that when I fold it, and attach my pages in there, it will open and shut nicely. Okay, so I'm gonna do a white sheet on the other side because my, the fabric that I'm using has a white background in places and I don't want to see any of that advertising peeking through the fabric in any way. I'm not worried about the interior because I'm using the wrapping paper on the interior. using fabric on the front and the back exterior and then there will be paper on the inside maybe some fabric as well so now my image I'm going to put it on first 
and it's going to be positioned slightly higher than center. Always make your bottom a little bit bigger than the top so, so your focal point, whatever it is, doesn't feel like it might be slipping off if you make that one little adjustment you'll find it makes a lot of difference in the way your work looks so we're going a little less up here a little more down here I did first glue this image onto a piece of black cardstock. Not only to help protect it, but to give my cover a little bit of more substance. It will be somewhat pliable, but not too much. So then my fabric I will switch to a fabric made for a glue that's made for fabric called Fabrifix. position this so that the dark green background is on the left side up here but on the right side down here.
tuck those corners around. So there's our cover. I'm going to stop the video now and I'm going to put the fabric on the back of this piece. No point in wasting your time watching me do that. It's slow going because the glue comes out so slowly. So I'll be back when I have that done. Okay, I'm back again and let me show you what I've done so far. When I left you, I had glued the fabric and the image down and since then I added more fabric to the back cover and then I put some vintage lace down the sides here to finish it off and soften it up. So here's our front cover and our back cover at this point. And then we're left with the inside. And so I've taken and resized my inside papers. This was the gift wrap paper. So I'm gonna put this one on this side and this one on this side. And then I'll show you where we go from there. And of course use a glue stick to adhere your papers, which I often do particularly when I am doing a large sheet, but I don't trust glue sticks 100% and so today I'm not going to take any chances and I'm using the wet glue. by overlapping the fabric as I could onto this side. It gives a nice finished look. Covers up whatever advertising might go out to the ends and ties it all together color-wise. So now this one down. These Florentine papers are so beautiful.
I particularly cut this paper so this beautiful flower would land right there. You just say good spot compositionally. So then I took a piece of white cardstock and cut it to size. It's a little less than three inches this way and a little less than seven inches there. And so this is going to, I'm going to glue it here, here, and here, and this will become a pocket so I can include other ephemera. This is the inside back cover. I'm not going to put a pocket there, but I am going to attach this queen on the back. And about there. Okay, now, in a little while, the journal pages are going to be sewed on to the cover, and I will do that off camera, but in order to kind of hold them in place, made a it's not a side pocket I was going to call it a flap 
but I'm going to glue. I put a couple of scores, scoring marks down there so it will glue nicely to the thickness of the cover but also give me a little extra space there as well which will become more apparent a little later. sense in leaving it in a state that you're unhappy with because it'll bug you. Once the pages are sewed in there, this flap will help keep them in place that way and then it'll close over this way. So, see how that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue her, this queen there, and put the coat of arms up there. A little hesitant about using the black stock here because everything else is so lovely and pastel but I wanted to have 
a really strong contrast between the back and these other images and so I figured the black not a whole lot of it will be showing but there's a lot of black in some of the images so I think it'll tie in nicely and work out just fine. Then on the inside, I will have her, and I'll probably do some text of some kind down here. had these queens made up into a, a couple of nice kits for some while and I just never did anything with them myself and I was eager to figure out something to do that wasn't going to take forever to make. Get a little impatient. So that's how it's coming together. I had thought about putting the coat of arms down here, but I needed it more there. So I have a nice pocket here, and I will have some other ephemera to stick in there like so. I have to sew this in and I'm going to do all of that off camera so I'll be back when I have that done. And I'm back. I ran into a issue that I hadn't thought about. I got over to my sewing machine and I was gonna sit down and try to sew the pages in and they're too wide. Not the pages, but the book is cover is too wide for my sewing machine so I'll have to sew them in by hand no problem so my I'm using embroidery thread with an embroidery needle and I cut my thread approximately three times the length uh, or the height of my project. That gives me enough to be comfortable. I'll have enough to tie it off. So I'm going through the center hole first of my three holes. And then I'm going to come up find where my hole is. There it is. I come up through the top hole and then I drop down to the bottom hole. Then find the center again.
Ooh, that was a bit off. Boy. No matter how hard you try, it's so easy to get, get things just a little bit off. Oh well. So I come back up through the center hole and I pull on it so it's taut but not too tight and then I'm just going to tie it off with three knots. I'll maybe give it four. And then just clip this about half an inch away from the... So, now it's sewed in, the problem is, wouldn't you know, for some reason or other, I didn't get it centered on the cover. So while it looks okay on the inside, what I wanted but I'm not happy with what it looks like on the outside so you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna start over and do it a little different way fortunately with fabric you can oftentimes regroup without it being too noticeable so what I'm gonna do is I know where my holes are on this so I'm gonna come back here and That one I guess is okay. It, I got off as I went down. So I'm going to put a new hole in there and a new hole in here. Because I've got a pretty glaring hole there that's going to show, I'm going to run a bit of washi tape down there. done before and
don't need washi tape on both sides. So I'm going to cut this thinner. hole that I think be the least conspicuous of everything I have. Yep, that works. going to use some, I'm not going to use black, I need to use, oh, it's a bit stark, I've got something in here that's kind of an off-white, well, that's not going to work. stuff or not. No, it's a little thinner. Okay. I could probably get this to work. One way or another, we're going to get this thing done. I'll be back after I figure this out. All right, I found some off-white embroidery thread after all. I didn't think I had any. And so I think we're in business again. Put my clips back on make the job easier.
drop down to the bottom hole. And up through the middle again. Make sure you put one side of your thread on the left side of the center thread and the other one on the right so you can tie it off. Pull it so it's nice and taut, but not too tight where it would cause it to buckle. And then just, I'm going to give it four knots, three should be sufficient, but do four for good measure and then snip it about a half an inch off and there we go so I should have put my holes in from the outside here so I knew for sure they were going right smack in the middle where it wouldn't show and it was not a good idea. What's that? It was not a good idea to use black embroidery thread. I'm so accustomed to using black for almost everything. I just grabbed it up without thinking. And that was a mistake. Unless you, you know, for some reason you deliberately want the sewing to show, then try to use a color that blends with the palette so you can hide it as easily as possible. So, we're almost there. I don't know what happened here. I'm gonna to try to get that spot out. Hopefully i be able to work it out. So, then you open it up. I still have to make some ephemera, maybe some tags or some postcards, whatever, that'll go in there. Then you open this up. I'll put some text there and maybe add a little something more back here. But you see there's some wonderful pages here, all lined and ready for someone to journal in. And so, I'll maybe come in and put something over that and um, then I'll come back after it's all done and show you. Well hello again I'm back and I have it I think pretty well finished at this point so let me show you what I've done. I have tied it up with a nice little vintage lace piece I had in my stash. I don't know if you remember, but I had a, gotten a little red smudge of something down here. Tried to get it out, it wouldn't come out. So I found this lovely little vintage certificate <laughs> that was just the right color and uh, attach that to cover that up. Sometimes, 
you know, just don't panic when something goes wrong because sometimes mistakes or things that went afoul wind up being the best things that ever happen. And I really love that down there, so I'm glad it happened. So this is the cover, and you open it up, and here's what we have on the inside. I've added a butterfly and the word journal, and I found two tags in my stash that I liked a lot and thought complemented the journal very well. So I'm um, stuck those in there. I put a queen and a coat of arms, a crest, I don't know what you call it, up here. And that tones down some of the black, or most of the black. Then you open it up and the flap comes out and we have another queen, a butterfly, lighted with beauty, sparkling with grace. And then here's the journal, all sewn in, and I think it's just fantastic, all of these coffee dyed sheets that are all lined and just waiting eager for somebody to write in them. And then the inside back cover looks like this. Another queen, another butterfly. I love butterflies. And so that holds that together. And then we flip it over to the back. And here's what I did on the back. Here's that black, um, the part of the flap that glued here so I could hinge it. And I covered that with some lace that where you could still see through some of the black but it toned it way down and I really like how that turned out and then I added another queen there didn't do a whole lot to the back uh, because I don't think it needs it anyway I'm quite happy with the way it turned out and I hope you like it hope you learned something from it and that you found it of value. So if you did, please like and share the video. I would appreciate that very much. And remember to visit my Etsy shop where I have resources that will help you with your own projects and go, you know, browse around, see if there's anything there that appeals to you that would help you. And so having said that with this being completed, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap.